Dear Peter, I told you I would write and tell you of the home we've made near the town of Galva. I can only say that it is truly an Eden with miles of what is known as the finest grain growing and grazing country of the state. If there's one thing that's changed over the past 150 years, it's farming. From horse-drawn plows and wagons to steam power, and now massive, super productive gas and diesel-powered machinery that would have amazed those early farmers. If there's one thing that hasn't changed over the years, it's farming. Despite new equipment, chemicals, hybrids, and breeds, farming is still the fullest of the full-time jobs. It takes a special kind of person to be a farmer, a love of the land, a work ethic second to none, and a sense of responsibility as our farmers produce the food that feeds the rest of the world. School is the best day of all. You grab up your books and you run through the hall and down the big steps and right out in the street and hustle right home to start out with bare feet. The teacher, she kisses you goodbye and cries and all of the girls, they are wiping their eyes. Huh? Think what she does when you don't mind the rules. Oh, the last day's the best day of all days in school. One of the first buildings to appear in Galva 150 years ago was a combination church, town meeting hall, and school. It was a little frame building without central heating or indoor plumbing. There weren't many children in town yet, so that first school wasn't too crowded. Within a year, though, a new school with four whole rooms was built. Eventually, that school was replaced by Galva's first brick school building. And right after the Civil War, another school building was added on the south side of town, then replaced just after the turn of the century with the Lincoln School building. The brick building on this site burned in 1950 and was replaced by a new building where many children and teachers spent their careers. Galva has seen two new high schools since the 30s, and many other changes have occurred. It's been a challenge at times, and those challenges will continue. But one thing remains constant. For 150 years, quality education for all Galva children has been a priority and a commitment. Dear John, I finally have time to write you. As it is Sunday, a day of rest. We attended services this morning in the new building we have erected for that purpose. It was very warm and the pastor spoke for a very long time. As was mentioned, one of the first buildings in Galva was dedicated to learning. But not just to the ABCs. That one room building was also used as a church with the first congregations in town being the Methodists, the Baptists, and the Congregationalists, soon followed by the Swedish Lutherans, Episcopalians, and Roman Catholics. Church was important to those early settlers as a place to come together to worship God, as a respite from a daily life that was at times very challenging and demanding, and as a place where people from all different parts of the world could remember and enjoy the beliefs and cultures of their native lands. Church is still an important part of life in Galva. We come together, we praise God, we learn, and we remember. If you want the best local market for your stock, grain or other produce, if you want to engage in manufacturing, if you want a home where there are no barriers of social caste, but where all true men and women are on terms of social equality, come to Galva, lovely village of the plain, set like a gem in the emerald fields of the grandest state of the Union. This advertising copy from the late 1800s told of a town with a lot to offer in the areas of farming, manufacturing, or business, and even more to offer in terms of quality of life. Galva got its start in business because of its access to natural resources and transportation. But most of all, Galva grew and has continued to grow 
because of people. People with ideas. People who work hard. People who think Galva is a great place to work, dream, build, succeed, and live. In 1882, John H. Best founded a new company to serve the needs of an important industry. His products? Display racks for buggy whips and carriage rugs. His philosophy? Goods well displayed are half sold. Along with John H. Best and Sons, there are a number of names that have been a familiar part of the Galva business landscape. Names like Dick's Line, founded in 1925, which was awarded the 2002 Illinois Family Business of the Year Community Service Award by Loyola University. And names like Hathaway's, the Galva Co-op, Houghton's, Neen's, Galva Iron and Metal, the Galva Foundry, Pearson Brothers, Jacobson's Bakery, Briegel's, the Galva Creamery, Lily Tulip, and others that have been an important part of our lives over the years. With newer names like Gateway Co-op, Eagle Enterprises, and Bob Evans Farms becoming major players in the Galva business scene more recently. We used to go to Galva on a Saturday night and the streets were so crowded you couldn't even find a place to park. Finally, we figured out to leave a car there in the afternoon, then walk back in the evening so we'd have a place to sit and watch folks walk by. The thing about Galva is this. Despite the fact that we're not exactly Las Vegas, there always seems to be something to do and some way to have fun. We remember the dances at the Opera House and popcorn and movies at the Galva Theater. Boating, swimming, and fishing at Spring Lake. Sportsman's Lake and Lake Calhoun. Hayrack rides, square dancing, band concerts in the parks, and picnics by the pond. Long, lazy rides in the country, and warm summer evenings spent cruising the downtown square. And can we celebrate? Galva knows how to throw a party, especially on July 4th, and just before Christmas, when hundreds and even thousands of people gather to see the fun that Galva can offer. And of course, we remember that big week 50 years ago when Galva celebrated its first 100 years. The town was alive with visitors from around the world, with parades, pageants, demonstrations, and dancing girls. Yes, some of these places and events are now just a part of history. But Galva still is a place where we enjoy life. Where we sing a song, put on a show, lead a cheer, watch our children grow, and stay young with them. About a year ago, I received a letter from our mayor, Don Hageman, asking me to attend a meeting at City Hall. We all spent time looking through historical photos, documents, and films to review what was done in the past to assist in evaluating what activities and events could be utilized for this current celebration. We have focused on preserving our past through our celebration and events, showcasing what has made Galva special and the attributes we possess to prepare us for our future. I'm not going to lie and say that I'm excited about this deployment, but every soldier, regardless of how they feel, will execute his duty without any question and will hold true to the oath he took when they joined the military. I believe what we're doing over here is good. It's an honor to serve my country, and it's an opportunity that every soldier waits for. But it's an even bigger honor to serve with the soldier on my right and the soldier on my left, my friends and my brothers. They are our sons and daughters our husbands and wives, brothers and sisters. Through the years, Galva men and women have done their duty. When our country is called, they have given their time, their talent, their courage, and even their lives. We support them with our hopes and good wishes, with our letters and speeches, and with our prayers. They are our sons and daughters, our husbands and wives, brothers and sisters. They are the heroes.